Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Uh, that Vlad? Yep, that's me. And okay. I'm going to join both by phone, and, by phone and by laptop because I'm having some issues. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So I can never tell when I look at it on the screen. Is the first letter of your last name an L or an I? It's an I. OK. That's what I thought. OK. And Clemens, was that you I heard in there? Yes, it was. OK. You're very faint. And Joe, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks. All right, cool. Is uh, I'm faint because I'm, I feel like death. <laughs> you feel like death. OK. I'm luckily not, but. Uh... OK. Um, Thomas, you there? Yeah, I'm here. OK. Uh, is, is Snidia, is that you, Vlad, again? Or is that someone different? I doubt that's me. OK. Charlie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. And with which company are you with, Charlie? Uh, I'm with a company called Fine Design Group. Is it Prime? Fine, like F-I-N-E. Oh, Fine Design Group, okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see, who else? Oh, there you are, Vlad. I see more than once now. So there's a, someone in there um, with the name of Sinadia? Uh, Alberto Ricard from Sinadia. Ah, got it. And this is Colin Sullivan from Sinadia. Um, yeah, we're on the Nats team. Oh, OK, cool. If you guys can fill in your last names, or at least one of you on your last names on the agenda, I'd appreciate that so I can get you guys in the attendance. John, are you actually there? John Mitchell, are you there? Okay, what about Varun? Good morning. Oh, hey, John. Yep. Okay, what about Varun? Hey, I'm here. I'm driving. I can only do first 20 minutes today when I'm here. Okay, not a problem. Thank you. Oh, I misspelled it. Oh, did it do? Oh, everybody's early today. Maybe we're still on Demic time. <laughs> In that case, you should be drinking. Hey, Dan, which Dan is that? Is that Dan Barker or Rosanova? John McCabe, you there? Yes, hi. All right, hello. Dan Barker, you there? Can you hear me? Yep, I can catch you now. Thank you. Ah, going through the wrong microphone. Uh, not a problem. Varam, are you there? Yep, here. All right. Uh, Justin Conway? I got a lot of background noise. It may be coming from you, Joe. Justin, oh, Justin doesn't have a microphone yet, so never mind. I'm connected with Brom. Hey. Oh, okay. Justin. Got it. Okay, thank you. Brom. Morning, Doug. Hey, Mark. 
Uh, let's see, Bill Fine. Oh wait, I already have you, I think. Never mind. Or do I? No, maybe I don't. Bill I don't Fine, so. you there? First nope. meeting. All right. Perfect. Which company are you with, Bill? Joint. Joint. Excellent. Thank you. ENT. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. And not uh, ENC. Not, yeah. And uh, Derek, are you there? Yes. And what which company are you with? Uh, Synadia. We are are the stewards of the Nats uh, CNCF project. Got it. Okay. Maybe you could fill in your last name for me on the agenda. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. Um, let's see who else. Hi, I'm, I'm sorry. What was that? Alex. Oh, hi, Alex. It's Alex Ellis. Hey, hey, Alex. Hey. Got it. Thank you. Oh, let's see. We got someone in there that shows up as R. Oh, Richard Gee. Yep. All right. Which company are you with, Richard? Richard's probably, and myself probably from OpenFAS. Oh, um, okay. Are you doing companies, projects? Yeah, so I'll just do VMware again. Um, Richard's not at VMware. Oh, he's not? Oh, okay. Which company is he with? OpenFAS project, I would say, is probably more relevant. It's not really yeah. a company, though, is it? No, it's not a company. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Richard, are you actually Rich there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Open okay. Fast. Okay. Do you want to be associated with a particular company? Uh, no, open fast, please. Okay. Uh, I'll have to worry about that one later. All right. Uh, I saw some other people pop in there. Wow. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Hi, Doc. This oh, is Kathy. Hey. Got it. Thank hey. you. Got it. Make it easy on me. Appreciate that. Um, Charlie Pitkin. I already have you. Yeah, we got you. Never mind. Sorry. Um, Ginger Collision. You there? It's Collison. Yes. Collison. I'm sorry. You, 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 okay, you're going to learn. I am very bad with names. That's no problem. I'm with Sanadia as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see. Who else went by the list? Sean Smith. Yeah, hi, I'm with Oracle. Oracle, got it, thank you. Steve O, are you there? I'm in. All right, thank you. Um, is there anything I'm missing? I feel like I missed something. Uh, Collins, I'm not sorry, not Collins, Austin. Hi, Doug, hi everyone. Hello. Uh, Yaron is here. Doug. Hey, Yaron. Hi, this is David Lyle. Hey, David. Um, bum, 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 bum. Is there anybody I'm missing? There's Mark Fisher and Jurgen in Cambridge. Got it. I could spell right. It was Mark and who was the other one? Jurgen Leschner. I can type it in. Got it. Okay, yeah. Please help me out there. <laughs> it could get real ugly. Oh, thank you. Um, bum, 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 bum. Anybody else on the call that we do not have yet? Otherwise, I'm going to begin momentarily. And here's the agenda doc again. If you guys want to add your name to the list, just don't put an asterisk there. We'll get you on roll call later. All right, tell you what, it's four after. Why don't we go in and get started? Um, so what so I was thinking, I'm sorry, was someone going to say something? Oh, okay, so today what I want to do is focus a little bit on uh, process, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, now that we've gone through uh, our first major milestone, 0 0.1, and technically we may have actually reached 0 0.2, 0 0.3, <clears throat> and a fair amount of 0 0.4, I thought it might be good to revisit our plans for 1.0, which we did a little bit at the face-to-face. -face. Um, so that's what I'm going to focus on mainly on the call today, if that's okay with you guys. Um, and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't want to spend too much time on it though. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to let you guys know that on the TOC call, I believe it's next Tuesday, uh, we are going to be giving an updated status on what we're doing here. And I have a link to that in the agenda, as well as our proposal for the cloud event uh, group um, to become a sandbox project under the CNCF. Uh, we've been kind of very loosey-goosey in terms of what we actually are because we're not 
we are part of the serverless working group, but because we're actually producing a specification, it's a little bit fuzzy in terms of you know what people actually call us and what our role is or classification is within the CNCF. So uh, we've been asked to make it a little more formal and we decided to try to join as a sandbox project. Um, I believe the, the biggest stumbling block for us to go to the next level up, which is incubator, would be at, uh, at least three different um, uses in production, which I don't think we have there yet. I think uh, Microsoft might be the only one that can claim that as of today as an official supported thing. But anyway, we'll start with sandbox. But um, so I'm mentioning this to you guys for two, pre for two purposes. One, so you're aware of it, but two, to please look over the status and proposal itself mainly to make sure that one uh, we don't have anything incorrect in there we don't want to lie to the group in terms of our status and and what we've been doing but also if you believe that there's more information we can add in terms of why the cncf should consider us for a sandbox project in particular around the alignment section of the proposal any additional text you think might be useful in there just go ahead and you know either ping me or add a note to the PR um, and I'll, I'll get that added in there. Um, but anyway, with that, I just wanted to bring it up to you guys, you know, as an FYI kind of a thing and, you, and ask you guys to review it when you do get a chance. Are there any questions or comments about that? All right, in that case, next. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. As I was going through the uh, list of issues, I came across these four that I thought could technically be, be closed because of uh, mainly because I thought we covered it uh, with other work that we've done. Um, now I have made comments, I believe in all these saying that I think they're ready to be closed and no one's spoken up and objected. And in some cases, some people have you know given a thumbs up to, to do it. But I felt a little uncomfortable just going off and closing them without making you guys aware that I'm gonna be doing that at the end of today. So please look at these four issues. If you believe they should remain open, just add a comment and I won't close it. Um, even if for some reason you don't get a chance to do it, we can always reopen them later. But I just wanted you guys to be aware of what's going on with these four. That way it's you not can, a surprise to you guys. Close, and, you can close the two that I have, have on my list. Okay, thank you Clemens. Okay, so anyway, everybody else, please take a look at that. If you think for any reason they should remain open, just add a comment and I'll keep it open. But at the end of today is the deadline for keeping those, or for me to close those. Just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Any questions or comments on that? All right, cool, thank you. All right, so let's talk about next milestones. And we, as I said, we started talking about this at the face-to-face -face for you know, what we wanna do for 1.0. Uh, what I'd like to do is suggest a process where uh, we obviously use GitHub the way it's meant to be used. So what I'd like to ask is that everybody who had an idea at the face-to-face -face for what they'd like to see included in 1.0 to please open up an issue. Um, by default, I'm probably gonna mark everything that comes in as a 1.0 issue, because um, I think that's probably the safest thing. And then as new issues come in, we can discuss them and decide whether they wanna move them out of the 1.0 bucket and move them into something that's either post 1.0 or not required for 1.0, whatever the proper term we wanna use is. Um, but I figured that's the safest way to go right now is to assume it's for 1.0 until we uh, have a discussion and assume otherwise. And so with that, what I'd like to do is, I, uh, last night I did go through and tag everything that I thought was fairly obvious as a 1.0 topic. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's necessarily gonna be uh, done for 1.0, but I think that we have to have the discussion for 1.0 because if we do decide to do what was being proposed in there, it's a semantic change or a breaking change to the spec. And obviously we need to consider those before 1.0. So I went through and tagged a whole bunch of 1.0, but then there was a set of them that I didn't know what to do with quite yet. And I want to have a discussion. And so I wanted to narrow down the list for us to talk about today, if that's okay with you guys. So what I want to do was to go through the unlabeled or un untargeted uh, issues and PRs, and then look at the ones that I tagged as not required for 1.0 and see which of those you guys want to pull into the 1.0 release. And again, it's not for definite inclusion to say we're going to do this for sure. It's just to have the discussion for 1.0. And I believe the total list is maybe about 10 or 12 total issues or PRs to discuss. That way it shouldn't take the entire phone call. Is, is that an okay process for you guys? Works for me. Okay. Yes. Sounds okay. good. And I, then I figure at some point in a future call, we can then try to narrow this list down to see which ones we want to do, you know, sooner than 1.0 for, um, for a sooner milestone. But that's, um, that will come later. So um, collaborate on libraries and supporting tools. This one, while I opened it, I believe I opened this for Euron. 
Now you're on, um, oh, I'm sorry, this was from the, um, from the roadmap. So on roadmap version 0.4, we say collaborate on libraries and supporting tools. My initial reaction on this one was that if we do this, it's not necessarily a hard requirement for 1.0, it could come after 1.0 but I felt a little uncomfortable tagging it as such without a discussion with you guys first. What do you guys think? Does this have to be done before 1.0 or at least does the discussion have to happen before 1.0 or can we say this can be done after 1.0? Yeah, I think when we work as a group, you saw in one week we can do a lot of work. So I, I think, I don't think it's mandatory, but I don't see any problem for us not to, to have it, especially if we uh, minimize the scope. You know, for example, what I what I suggested just to create like client libraries and then maybe advance to other things. Okay, so you want to have a discussion before 1.0. Is there anybody who disagrees with that? What's the scope of the libraries? Are we just talking about um, structs and object graphs? Are we talking about something more involved? We haven't decided that yet. That's that way part of the discussion. Yeah, we yeah should I, talk about I opened. Uh, this I is opened. the kind of thing that would be good as a comment from Yaron on on this issue, so that people can understand the context of what it means. So I, I have another issue, uh, Doug, uh, which I opened uh, yesterday or, or a couple of days ago, and it has a little more details. That yeah. see client SDK. You see this one? Yep. So tell you what. Let's do this. I, I, I'd, I'd rather err on the side of having too much in 1.0 right now. So tell you what, let me mark this as 1.0 and then you're on, let's go to your SDK one and you can briefly, very briefly please summarize this one and we'll decide whether we want to for sure talk about this before 1.0. So, uh, you know, let's start with, for example, we have HTTP, which we sort of uh, in a high level agreed how it looks like. So now uh, we can create an SDK, for example, you have uh, Go or Java or Node for each one of them. You, you have a class where you're initializing, let's say the cloud event structure and you're saying, you know, publish, essentially you need like three methods, you know, to initialize something, to destroy it and, and to submit or publish the, the event message. And then we can create sort of a pluggable mechanism for transports initially starting with HTTP. And then as we starting to define AMQP or Kafka or other transports, we just plug them underneath. So we can divide it to, you know, sort of the five major languages. Everyone can take a peek at uh, one of them and start uh, structuring it. And maybe if we could do it in GitHub, then, uh, you know, everyone can uh, participate. You know, we can take Go, for example, someone else wants to take Node. Is this a discussion that has to happen before 1.0? Yeah, I don't, so um, I think this is a great effort to do, and I'm all for it. It just I just think it's orthogonal to the spec work. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I I also wanted to make that point because like uh, Yarn and I had a great discussion in one of the threads where we basically proposed two different interfaces that had totally different trade-offs. Uh, one is zero copy. One is uh, strongly typed. Um, and I'm a little bit cautious about saying that we will make the trade-off as like the standards body or the the working group recommends exactly one SDK. Yeah, I, 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 at this point, I'm I'm not comfy building you know cloud events GMS. Um, and so, so okay. Well, I think what I'm hearing is e even if we do decide to do this work, it may be part of a separate work stream outside of the specification itself. Is that true? That's how I look at it. Same here. So, if okay. this becomes a sandbox project and cloud events is called a sandbox and it has a github org or repo and then this code gets inside of it I, sorry i don't know who was speaking but somebody was just saying that it, it could appear like there's an opinionated preference for if we want to do zero copy or strongly typed etc by the implementations that are provided by volunteers yeah by the way i think that the client side is simpler because there's less opinion on that one I think the consumer side is the one with all the sort of, mar you know, the marshalling aspects. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what to do with this one. It sounds like maybe this goes into that bucket of additional work streams for us to consider in the future. Yeah, but the only thing, I, you know, I think we became sort of extremely serialized. I like to do things in parallel. I don't think we need to complete 1.0 in order to start this work. It doesn't have to necessarily end in the same time, but I don't think we need to work serialized on everything. 
yeah, I would agree. And actually, I have a topic later in the agenda about timeline for additional work streams and how we want to do that. So if it's okay with you, Yaron, what I'd like to do is to put that, whoops, that's not right. No, no. Try this. I'd like to add that to the list of additional work streams, and then we can discuss that under that section. Is that okay? Sure. The question then is, what do we do with this issue? Um, is this something is this we should something close? close? Or, yeah. Or? yeah, so um, Doug, uh, every time I come out on and off mute, I interrupt inadvertently. But we had put in a, an issue, and I'll put it in chat. It's kind of, it's kind of related to the client SDK. Um, I think it's labeled right now as not being required for 1.0. But it's um, similar in that there's really something of a conformance tool to, you know, to validate a given provider's implementation um, against the spec. And so the client SDKs certainly facilitate adoption, which is, you know, which behooves the, the project um, as we, you know, as it moves into something like a sandbox or, or to that next step. Um, I wonder... I think it's good maybe to reflect on this as we go to decide about whether client SDKs need to be 1.0 or not as well. Yeah, so, so I think what you're saying is that we have to at least one implementation, which will be our conformance tool. We don't have to have for every language, but at least having something. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, okay. But before we get to the, to that one itself, Lee, let, let me back up a sec here. So on this one, you're on. Should I close this one and assume it'll be covered under the additional work stream topic? Uh, you're the boss. <laughs> well, I'd like to just clean up the list. And, and if we're not gonna cover this under here, I'd rather close it out and just keep it as part of the additional work stream list, if that's okay. Okay, hold on. Okay. So, tell you what, we were going to get to it eventually, but Lee, since you brought it up here, let's talk about this one. I originally marked this last night as not required for 1.0 because I didn't think it was required for the spec itself to reach 1.0, even though I do think this is obviously a very important piece of work. Uh, what do people think? Is this something that we should pull into the 1.0 timeframe? Is it something that we say not part of the spec work itself, but it's a separate work stream? What do people want to do with this one? That seems that seems like something you would build on the tooling you built in the other work stream. Okay. Honestly, I I do like the idea of the the group that is trying to define the standards, also like contributing an acid test of sorts. Mm. That's kind of where my mind was at too. Um, the acid the acid test would be useful um, to check compliance, like. Um, Lee was saying, but it seemed like there was a risk that this could seem like the opinionated implementation of, of the client library. Well, I think it kind of depends on how it's written, right? So for example, let's say it ends up being just a tool that receives cloud events and just says, yes or no, did it adhere to the spec, right? Did it have all the required fields? Yeah. Are the strings in the right format? That's a completely different thing to, that's just a, uh, a certifier, right? Right. Yeah, like Kubernetes has a certifier. That's a completely different thing to what this is proposing. It's still useful. They're both they're both useful. They both should probably be done over time. Otherwise, we will all write our own client SDKs. I think that's why Yaron raised this. But it just needs some. I guess we need some direction on it. So, Lee, what was your intention with this one? You mean with respect to 1.0 or, ju or just in general? Well, it, both. Uh, what kind of tooling were you thinking here? I mean, did, was it simply the checking that a cloud event looks right or was it grander in scope? Uh, mostly that it looks right. Mostly that, uh, that yeah, that there was a, some way of de denoting whether or not a given implementer, a given provider, um, you know, had conformed to the spec, had you know, it had been certified, so to speak. And I know that that's a, that's a big term, certified. But um, and yeah, whether that and, you know, it, maybe it's I mean, it could be used for those purposes of um, of labeling as being conformant. 
um, that type of a process is, you know, would usually involve potentially this working group or the CNCF then hosting uh, that, that getting a label and fixing a label is a lot more involved because you've got to validate the results and the integrity of those results. If it's just a tool to help those that are implementing and make sure and, and them, them to maybe build it into their CI systems to just validate that they've, they're continuing to adhere to the spec, um, then that's a lot simpler of a, you know. Yeah, I don't know if we want to get into the legalistic aspect of conformance and all that yeah. other stuff. Um, so if, if we were to scope this down to, as you described it, a tool that just validates that you're spitting out a valid cloud event, is that something that one, would you keep under this GitHub repo or in our organization somewhere, not necessarily the same repo, but you know, within the cloud events organization? Yes. And, and two, uh, is this something we need to discuss before 1.0? I would say yes to one, and then before one dot you know, like so technically you can one the spec without having you know this tool, um, and the same thing goes for client side SDKs. I think in my mind the client side SDKs help with a, adoption in general. The, a conformance tool like this, um, you know, I guess you know I, I don't uh, I won't I withhold opinion because I because I think it you could you know push either way. What other people think? Is this something we should that we should discuss uh, before 1.0? Now, keep in mind, just because we tag something as not required for 1.0 doesn't mean we don't get to it. It just means it's not necessarily a hard requirement for us to do so. But if someone takes yeah. the makes the effort to do it, it could get added to the agenda. Do you have a timeline for it? I for think this could, no. yeah, because this could be less. I think this could be less opinionated than the client SDK, yeah. because it is something that we can use to to check conformance. And I think it will help with people understanding whether they've adopted it correctly. Yeah, we have a, in, in MQP, there is a, um, a validator that basically just goes and, and looks at the bits on the wire uh, without building a fa fancy library and API around it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then basically just goes and checks that. Uh, right. I think that's even written for MQP that's written in Python. And so because it doesn't need to have multi-language support, you don't need to any of those things. You basically just need to see whether the bits come fall down the wire in the correct way. Yep. And I think if someone uh, shows up and volunteers to do it, then it certainly should be part of uh, 1.0. Right. So I'm hearing, it, I'm hearing it's very, very useful, but I'm not hearing anybody say that they think we have to do this before 1.0. I'd rather say this before 1.0. 1, 1, 1 because this would really help with uh, client-side SDKs. And if we could put this for 1.0 and client-side SDKs after 1.0, like having a validator would help people actually building client SDKs and doing tests on that. Okay. Well, like I said in my note yesterday, if uh, I agree with that. Today, yep, okay. So at least if one person, as I mentioned in my note yesterday, if at least one person says they want it for 1.0, we're gonna take the, uh, the conservative approach and tag it as such. So. Okay, so this one's now 1.0. Any strong objections to that? Because I'd rather play it safe and force the discussion than, than skip it. So, okay, we got those, those two, support work chain and workflow. Euron, I think this was opened by you the other day as well. <clears throat> yeah, I think we had the lively discussion at the face-to-face -face around uh, labels and uh, workflows and, and all that. and. I don't, it's not necessarily a new work item. It just, maybe we need to clarify within the, the standard what happens when you have sort of a, a router implementation. Uh, a workflow is one, one form of a router. You know, I'm getting an event and I'm passing it to, to another function and maybe daisy chaining several functions. So for example, uh, when I'm daisy chaining uh, an event, you know, from one function to another, uh, what is the source? Is that the original source? Or uh, am I creating a new source? Or am I embedding my source in the original source? So I think there needs to be some uh, guidance into uh, how we create workflows. Because I think uh, cloud events could be a, um, an awesome tool for building workflows. Because essentially, you could start labeling you know, the, the event with yeah. things like uh, work, workflow identifiers. You know, and, you it know, seems uh, interesting. OK. 
Yeah, so I agree with Yaron that that's it. that is an interesting limitation of the current spec is that if you if you receive a cloud event and then you yourself want to pass that on to another cloud event handler, then how do you decorate that? Because with a HTTP proxy, there there are ways of doing that. For instance, aren't there that we may be familiar with the um, X forwarded bind things like that. Yeah, I, th I think we should we should figure out figure out some scenarios for this and see how we're going to solve those like wh where the problems where the problems lie so that I think that's something that we should go and address because that's yeah. that might have um, breaking I'm, I'm worried I'm wor mostly worried about any breaking change impact that we might have like like real hard issues yep. uh, and that may be a candidate for one okay so I'm hearing this could this could change the spec so therefore that puts it into the 1.0 category yeah. I have a I have a comment on this one. Yeah, uh, I think you know, in our white paper we have a definition for workflow, which is serverless workflow. So I think I I think you know to avoid confusion, uh, I think this is more like a chain of events, not the real serverless workflow, which involves you know events and function and in, an interaction between the events and functions. Um, yeah, but again, you can generalize it that uh, a function next hop, not necessarily a single next hop and could even wait or be pending for a condition. So there's nothing precluding you from doing that. But I think this is, if you are talking to this as a, you know, like for the router, right? When I say the, the real workflow is like a state machine, you know, you have different states and then, you know, the transition between the states involve events and then you know the action could be you know uh, one at one function um, or, or multiple functions executed in parallel or in sequence or could be branching. I think that concept is different from this one. Uh, I just don't want people to be confused. Yeah, but, but, uh, the workflow. They, they they complement each other because even if you look at the uh, step functions from uh, from Amazon then you have the ability to control the output of uh, one function and the input to the second function. So this is in the context of sort of the cloud event. There, there is an addition, which is you're, you're saying, okay, there is a state machine. Am I waiting for a condition? Am I doing several things in parallel, et cetera? That's not necessarily part of the cloud event. Spec, so, but so, so Joran, I think Kathy is just saying that we may need to pick a different title because the wording makes it sound like we're going to be defining the workflow mechanism as opposed to just how do we possibly represent uh, chaining inside of a cloud event, or you know, what do we do about that? I think it's. I think she just wants a wording change to the title. Is that right, Kathy? That's right. Yeah, I just okay. want to avoid confusion. Otherwise, so, it's yeah. mixed together the two companies. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was getting at as well is not about the function chaining and implementation of that. I think that's that is very implementation focused. But how would you frame a cloud event that was of a cloud event, right? Or you'd forwarded a cloud event to another cloud event receiver that encapsulated it. Right, so Kathy, can you do me a favor? Can you put a comment in this issue with some alternative text for the title that you think makes it a little clearer? Okay. Some use um, cases would be good on this as well. Yeah. I, actually, I, I think training of you know, the events probably is a better title rather okay, than saying, yeah. To just just put a two comment different things. Before we, uh, before we move on to the uh, next issue, so one of my action items for this week was to do some research into distributed tracing or open tracing uh, and whether or not it could solve some of our labeling concerns. And though, though I was of the opinion that no, it is not the panacea we're looking for there, um, I do think that, like, you know, I, I did some surveys at KubeCon and any vendor who did any sort of visualizations, eyes lit up when I suggested that maybe we could get cloud events to support visualization across these, you know, the hops through a router. Um, and I really do think that we should look at supporting, at least in the HTTP spec or, you know, on a per transport basis, that we do support these tracing frameworks. And I'm wondering if that should be its own issue or if it should be something that we fold into this one or... Yeah, Thomas, I think, um, I agree. As a matter of fact, I was going to bring that up a moment ago. And it's kind of the, the baggage concept in open tracing is, you know, is you know, one of those ways to potentially um, chain things or, you know, passing along, <clears throat> you know, span IDs, if you will. Um, so, so Thomas, it, it's kind of up to you whether you want to add a comment to this one to make it part of this issue or open up a separate one. That, that's up to you, however you want to do it. Sounds good. Um, just uh, for Lee's sake, the, the concern I had with the 
like baggage in various tracing frameworks is that you are allowed to drop them. Mm. Um, and I, if I want to rely on it, I wonder if we need a different mechanism. Yeah. We, at the at the face to face, we have discussed this uh, notion of annotations. And I think that fits here. So we should go and have that, have that discussion and then see how we can go and make it work. Yeah. So let's not have the discussion now. Just uh, Thomas, your, your choice, whether you add it to this one or open a separate issue. But either way, it does sound like we want to discuss uh, all that under 1.0. So uh, Yoran, do you have a preference of whether I uh, pork barrel this issue or whether you want to um, have it, the discussion separate? Uh, whatever you, you feel more comfortable with. I think if we change this one to be just chaining, then to the extent that your mind is drawn to that, Thomas, and mine as well. And, yeah. Well, I think there's the question of uh, chaining that you can see from within the function's context and chaining that might be only like supportable at a lower volume for an actual like operator to see in a visualization tool. Now, for example, if you use some type of tracing framework, you might need an eventually consistent database that has a very low trace rate Whereas something that we want to depend on is an annotation that happens every time. So they are kind of different. So can you, is this other issue that we have for you, Thomas, what, does this cover that other topic already or? Yeah, this covers why tracing is not, is not a great match for the specific case of annotations. Uh, and so this also links into another case where I tried to explain my thoughts about correlation um, and how annotations fits into what I'm calling structured correlation versus some people have talked about uh, follows from or something like that for sequential correlation. Okay. So it sounds like maybe it'd be best if you open up a separate issue. Sure. Okay. And then, so then the next issue on the list though is this one. Um, is this something I, I suspect that this one we should probably should talk about uh, before 1.0 goes out the door given everything we just talked about, is that fair? Yeah, I mean, it was a research from which I found that my recommendation was to not do something. So I didn't know if it was just auto-closable um, or if we should just wait for people to see whether they disagree with my lack of action. Well, let's let it, when did you put it out there? Two days ago? Let's wait till next week. And if no one speaks up, then we can do an auto-close or, or close it on the call. But let's give people a chance to, to review your thoughts. Does that sound fair? Sounds great. Okay, and in the meantime, we'll tag it as 1.0 because we should resolve one way or the other before that. Any objection to that? All right, next. Alignment with IETF security event token. What do people think about this one? Is this something we need to discuss before 1.0? Has anyone even looked at this? That's another good question. <laughs> to be honest, I have yeah. not. Um, we, we should, we should, I, I haven't looked at this yet, but this is something we should look at. I'm, I'm, um, for the HTTP webhook spec, I, I, I mentioned that on the, the Slack channel yesterday. Um, we need to figure out what the right model is for the abuse uh, protection feature. And I have a proposal in there, but I'm happy to not invent anything and take something that exists. Um, so I don't know whether that aligns. So we'll have to go and take a look, take a look at it. Okay. It sounds like we should at least examine this one before 1.0. Yeah, absolutely. Any disagreement with that? Okay. This one, integrity. I'm not sure why I didn't, why this wasn't definitely 1.0, um, but for some reason I thought I'd ask the group. Is there any reason that we should not discuss this before 1.0? Um, th that's a rat hole. <laughs> <laughs> Is that reason enough to avoid it? No. Um, it does sound like an important rat hole, though. Um, so we're, I think we're we're generally using uh, TLS, um, and so that kind of helps with with the things not being being messed up on in transport. As far as routing is concerned, um, there are four hundred different ways of doing these things, uh, including uh, existing uh, uh, you know crypto frameworks, which can go and take a cloud event that's expressed in in. Uh, um, uh, in JSON and and wrap that so there's like JSON web uh, web encryption and JSON web web signature and all those things and then there's if you look at other so what I'm saying is um, and I, I there's a quote I want to quote myself just scroll a little bit up a little bit more 
um, the memories of W security throw dark, cold shadows. <laughs> you know, I actually enjoyed working on soap for a while there. So stop picking. <laughs> But it's, so I'm I'm worried. So I'm I'm really worried about the W security rat hole, and this can easily go into that. So I would I would literally want to go and scope this out of of V1, and then we can go in and think about message level security in the next version. But I would rather not try to go down that route because that gets very complicated very fast. Okay, so I'm hearing one vote for not required for 1.0. What do other people think? This was also discussed about when discussing labels, annotations, and the bag of property, properties thing. Because uh, an event might want to sign itself or encrypt itself with its labels, and that would require integrity checking. So this might be required for 1.2 because we do want labels and uh, annotations for events. And the events might want to be signed or encrypted or whatever. This was brought up at the face-to-face -face thing. Yeah, and I think that the, to some extent, uh, it's questionable whether this is even a non-goal uh, beyond things like TLS, because uh, as I noted in the one of the labels uh, issues or pull requests, uh, sometimes it got a little creepy and it might actually be in spec that you could have a router that redacts PII or something like that. Um, and I think that it is an open question or a valid question whether or not, um, not editing the event is a should or a must sort of behavior, and like only a must should be cryptographically signed. Okay, so what I'm hearing is at least one person thinks it is valid to at least have the discussion before 1.0. So we're talking about TLS and HTTPS specifically because the, that's the first implementation, but are all of the event transports encryptable? Can, they, can all of the ones we're looking at go over TLS? Like Kafka, AMPQ, etc. Um, yeah, so we have so MQTT and MQP and HTTP all have TLS bindings, and I would for for the um, um, I'm for the webhooks webhook spec. I'm actually leaning towards making it should be as mandatory. Okay, so we're going to have the discussion later. We don't need to have it right now. But it sounds like everybody is okay with at least keeping it at 1.0 for right now. So next, what I'd like to do is look at all the issues that I tag as not required for 1.0. Um, now, now, Clemens, yours are on here first. The only reason I marked those as not required is because I didn't think it was a hard requirement for 1.0, even though we may get to it beforehand. Um, would you prefer for these to be tagged as 1.0? Uh, yes, I would, and that is uh, only to prove out that we are building a multi-platform uh, or multi transport standard. So I think I think whether we whether we really do so yeah I'm I'm I would like to have both of them in one point now. Okay, fair enough. Hi, this Oops. this is Colin um, from the Nats team. We we would like to look into adding Nats as a transport, uh, you know, and just to see if it'd be a good fit. What would the be for that? Look look at look at the so I I wrote the HTTP, uh, MQP and MQTD specs and. Um, if you just go and let's say take the MQTT spec and uh, um, and rewrite it so that it fits for NAS. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically, just do, do, yeah, just do a PR basically. Yeah, oh. make a PR. This is we're open. We're open for everything. Um, it's just that you do the work. All right. Great. Thanks. Yep. Sure. All right. Um, we are only have twenty minutes left. I'm I'm a little nervous about clicking into each one of these. Um, given how long it might take. So let me ask this question. Looking at the list here, um, does anybody want to advocate for any of these being moved back into 1.0? And keep in mind, just because it's tagged as not required does not mean we won't discuss it. It just means if we don't get to it, we're not, it won't necessarily hurt the spec. We're looking for issues that if we, if we address them, they may actually make a breaking change to the spec. Anybody? Give another 30 seconds. Uh, I'm surprised that number five is still open. If we do need to, no, uh, literally issue number five. Oh, uh, uh, at the bottom. Bottom, thank you. Uh, if we have not figured out our non-goals, it would be probably good to actually figure out what we're not trying to do as early as possible. 
Yeah, the reason I think this one is lingering is because the person who signed up for it has been distracted on other things. If someone would like to take take on the work, I think that's fine. Uh, the reason I marked it as, as not required was mainly because I thought given all the stuff we put in the spec about what it is, it kind of implied what it's not. In particular, the things like say, uh, it's not gonna include the, the, des the destination address in there, for example, things like that. Yeah, so my, my devil's advocate argument that we should figure this out is that if we enable a certain situation and give a blessing of 1.0 for compatibility reasons, um, it will be hard to track that, no, 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 this isn't a use case we wanna support. Okay, so I'll tell you what, as I said, play it on the safe side, tag it as 1.0. Anything else? Last chance, actually I guess it's not last chance. Before we move on, last chance, but we can always revisit any of these later on if you guys uh, do some deep soul searching. All right, in that case, we'll keep these as is. And like I said, you can always change the labels later. This is not set in stone. So if you feel like things are mislabeled, just speak up later. Is that okay? All right, moving on then. Um, Let's see, so what I'd like to then do is as new issues are opened up, uh, I would like to go through a process of, assuming we don't get a boatload of issues every call, um, maybe take the first minute or so on each call to classify each issue as it comes in, whether it's 1.0 or, or not required to 1.0. Hopefully that won't take too much time. If we get a lot, then maybe we'll only do a couple on the, on the call. But I do, I, my goal is to make sure that every issue is tagged appropriately so that would help or that helps define what we're looking at in terms of goals for the next milestones or for the 1.0 milestone. Now, along those lines, we have, I believe, how many issues do we have total? We have 41 issues total. Um, and of those, I guess if we have what, six or seven on here, so somewhere in the mid 30 range of total issues for 1.0. I would like it if people looked at the list and volunteered to own some of them. Now that does not mean that you're responsible responsible for necessarily advocating a position one way or the other. It's more about uh, poking on people to come to a resolution and to help drive those discussions. Because um, without owners for these things, they may just linger. So please take a look at the open issues and volunteer for the ones that you'd like to at least help drive. I may take a few minutes on each call to pick out what I would consider the heavy hitters or the, the, the more important ones and try to strong arm people to volunteer to take them. Uh, just so we get some forward progress on them. Um, but it, oh, it's always best to volunteer if you can. I appreciate that. So I don't want to take time up now. Just to give you a heads up that I may start nagging people to volunteer. All right. So in terms of next milestones and objectives, um, I didn't want to spend all the entire call on it, but I do think on a future call, we should start talking about inter intermediary minds, milestones before 1.0 and what on that list of issues you want to include. So please be thinking about that. And if you have any suggestions for how to reduce that list down for the next milestone date, um, you know, please speak up with proposals. Otherwise, I'll try to brainstorm with some other folks and come up with something out of my own um, and see how the group feels about it. Any questions or comments about the milestone discussion? All right. So in terms of when 1.0 is ready, um, in my mind, this is what I sort of came up with is, Obviously, when we think we're all done with breaking changes or breaking issues, uh, when, when those are resolved, um, obviously typos type stuff, you know, we don't say need to worry about too much. But then there are other issues that came up. I can't remember, uh, someone may have actually opened up an issue related to this. I can't remember for sure, but they were questioning, I, actually, Thomas, it may have been you. You were saying, um, you know, how are we gonna determine uh, criteria for 1.0 in terms of implementations, use in production and stuff like that. So I included that in the list here. Um, one of the other things I thought might be interesting is we've gone a certain number of months without any major changes to the spec. Um, but I wanted to sort of brainstorm a little with you guys in terms of what other criteria you could think of that we should consider for when we feel like we're getting close to 1.0. And I did put a proposal here for what I thought might be a good thing to shoot for, which was three uses in production and perhaps three months of a time when the spec doesn't actually go through any breaking changes meaning it looks fairly stable and it's being used in production. But I wanted to open this up for, uh, as I said, a brainstorm, brainstorming discussion with you guys, see what you guys thought and how you'd like to address this. Silence. 
Thomas, can I pick on you since you opened up an issue related to this, I think? Sure. Um, I, like I, said, I, I like being able to uh, trust that I can rely on the 1.0 label. Uh, it really sucks when you have 2.0 come out right after 1.0. Uh, one thing I thought was really interesting is the number of implementations might be a really good test just to make sure that we uh, don't have some blind spot in the use case we're not handling. Um, the challenge is you can measure that in a couple of different ways. You can say that um, we have two implementations due to you know, Microsoft and serverless framework supporting this, uh, though I don't know, it might be better to say that we have a certain number of event providers or a certain number of uh, customers using this in production for their actual application. Um, the last one I think is the most important, but maybe the most business sensitive to the various um, people involved. All right. Any other comments, questions from people? Is this a topic that's just premature? Is that why people are silent? Or is this something people don't want to discuss right now? Yeah. How serious are the versions? Like, how, uh, when could 2.0? be released at the earliest? Is this something that's going to happen every by now, three, five years? Or is it more like, OK, we might have a new version every year, every six months? In, in my opinion, I think it's too soon to tell. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that we're going to follow you know, the semantic versioning rules, where as long as we're making non-breaking changes, we're not going to go up to 2.0, and everything's backwards compatible. Um, and whether we want to introduce a breaking change it will be completely up to the group to decide. I would personally prefer to aim at the three year horizon or longer. Um, just because we're talking about like creating a, a distributed ecosystem of a lot of partners and it's going to be very hard to move any of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with the sentiment. I, the only reason I couldn't put a date on it was because, you know, if, if two months after we release 1.0, we find a major flaw in the spec, I don't think it'd be in any, anybody's best interest to wait three years then to put out a 2.0. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to stick to the guns and say we need to have schedule driven development. Uh, I'm just saying the, uh, the gravity that I think 1.0 should carry is that we believe it can last for years. I definitely agree with that. So this is Alex again. Um, what, why is there such a focus on hitting 1.0, which is actually the point at which you cannot make breaking changes, and, and we want to make breaking changes on a very low cadence? Do we not need a lot more validation from people using this and adopting it before we, we go to 1.0? Is What's pushing that? I, I, I'd say that's the basis of, of the question, which is what amount of validation do we need in order to declare it as a 1.0? Right, this is super early. I mean, it was zero, 0 0.1 last week or declared that a couple of people are using it, but really do we need more feedback before we, we say, right, this is a finished work? I would say so. Yeah, I, I'm okay with saying this is a premature discussion. I just, I think maybe Thomas's issue is the one that sparked the, the idea for having a discussion on today's call. And if people want to wait and see how things go before we even have the discussion further, that's fine. Um, and if someone was to ask us, for example, in the TOC call next week, you know, what is our criteria for 1.0? How do we know when we're there? I could, I could dance around that and say, we don't have a firm line in the sand yet. It's still up for discussion and, you know, that's fine. But if we did have something a little more concrete that I could say, then I was hoping to have that, you know, as a, as a, as a thing to say. But if it's, if it's premature, that's fine as well. And, and I think the I think the tension there is also that people want to get to a one point in order to ensure the stability of the interface of the spec. Okay, I I would agree. That yeah, that is the reason for going to a major version clearly. But if we go into major version before it has widespread adoption, it's and then you you get that adoption. That's the risk, isn't it? That maybe didn't build it build the right thing right i think i think all of us need to think hard about what what would we want to see in a 1.0 in order to call it a 1.0 so it's a to me this is yeah, an another discussion question. you're right so i think what i'm hearing so far is this may be a little premature but it may be a good thing for us to start thinking about in the back of our minds and maybe what i should do is wait 
a couple of months or a couple more milestones and then re-raise the question to see if, if we have any more uh, of a solid answer. That what sounds statistics fair? Are, are you guys um, recording at the moment in terms of adoption or usage? I don't think we have anything official other than we have a, a web page, I'm sorry, a, a markdown document with a list of people who have implementations. Okay. So to, to, to the previous discussion about 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 that was in the milestones. Mm -hmm. I think I think if everyone could take a look at those and come next week thinking about, you know, what are the next major milestones that we would like to see, some of that could be adoption based in terms of providers, consumers, open source, et cetera. So you would want people to think about what they should, what they want to see in the next milestone, basically, right? Right. Or the next set of milestones. Does that sound fair to everybody? Okay, I'm not yep. hearing any objections. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll assume that this was a premature discussion, which is fine, um, but at least so we'd have an AI out of it, so thank you, Mark. Anything relative to this discussion people want to bring up? Okay, next with only about seven minutes left. So we have a whole bunch of topics that people wanted to discuss for sort of additional workflows. And you're on, I believe earlier in the call, you said we don't need to serialize everything and I definitely agree with that. So then the question then becomes, at what point in time do we wanna have a discussion around kicking off one of, the, one of these additional work streams? Because I do think there will be a little bit of process involved there. So for example, if nothing else, I do think we need to get agreement from the TOC on, on starting another work stream, uh, the same way we did on getting agreement to start cloud events at all. Uh, Cause I don't think it'd be appropriate for us to do something out of, out of for lack of a better phrase, charter or bounds of what we, what the TOC agreed for us to look at. Um, so how do you guys want to approach this? Do you want to wait until it feels like the cloud eventing spec is, is sort of calming down and we're not going through so much churn Otherwise, we may get our time split up too much, or do you want to start it, you know, basically right now and start picking out the next work item? How do you guys want to approach this? So, so I think we got the cloud event agreement after we started talking about it in the in the working group, and then got to, you know, name it, you know, and so we we do need to start discussing what's the next item, and only then go to the, uh, you know, TOC. Oh, I, I agree. If I if I phrased it backwards, I apologize. I definitely think we should come up with the idea. But before we start doing it, like actually writing down a spec, uh, I think it would be best to get an agreement from the TOC because if the TOC comes back and says no, then that may change how we process it going forward. Yeah, but slightly um, more than that, maybe incubating the concept, you know, uh, you know, talking, let's say we, we talk about security for you now, we're starting to define what do we really need, et cetera, and then going to the TOC when you know what you want to talk about. Okay, and hey, Kathy, you're trying to speak up in there? Right. Uh, I would like to propose that we you know we start work on the um, the service function workflows, which is you know about you know how to um, what kind of language primitives we can use to define the uh, to specify the or to compose the function uh, workflow and also the interaction between the event and functions. Because I'm seeing you know some companies already started doing this. For example, Amazon step function, platform nine is doing it. Huawei is doing it that, and IBM I think is doing that. So I think we need to, um, if we can discuss, have a uh, consistent way of, you know, the to, for the user to specify the function workflow, that would be good. Otherwise we'll be all different, you know, versions or varieties of how to do that. Right, okay, so we ignoring for a moment which particular work item we want to address. Do people want to start having those discussions immediately or do you want to wait for some event to happen in the future? I think we do have to talk about this now because uh, at least what uh, was said about the bagging and labels and stuff, like that needed input from users. Like you need a workflow to know what labels you want to add and having a spec for that, we decided it was not in the scope of cloud events, but it would be in the scope of something else being done by the serverless group. 
And we yeah. can't properly do the spec if we don't have workflows and chaining and stuff like that. And we need a spec for that to be able to do this in cloud events. Okay. Yeah, I support that. I think, you know, when we discuss a lot of correlation things or what information we should add to the events or how we should add it, that's all related to relate to the, you know, the workflow on um, how we should do that. So I think, you know, working on the workflow, well, you know, we can come back to see what's missing in the event, cloud event spec. Okay, so I, I'm hearing people want to at least start having the discussion now. Is this something that you'd like to spend time on next week's call or should we set up a secondary call to have that discussion and bring back a recommendation for the group? Is, is this about all of the topics or about function chaining over function signatures? It, it, it's about looking at the list of, uh, of possible work streams and figuring out which one or ones we'd like to tackle first. That would be a good thing to make movement on. Yeah. So yeah, is I, this... I, let's do it in this call and then branch out if we want to have specific topics. Okay. So well, then what we'll do... Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take as much time as we needed on next week's call to figure out which of this list or others if you want to add to the list, we want to tackle next as a work stream. Okay, so please be thinking about it. If you have additional items you'd like to add to the list, please get them in before the phone call so people have a chance to think about it in advance. Um, we actually technically have a future work item document and unfortunately it's very, very slim. Um, I will take the action item of adding this list that we have down here to that document. Um, Do you want it as PRs or issues? Uh, say that again, Jaron? Do you want to, us to add issues or PRs for that? Uh, this, this is a markdown doc, so if you want to add things to this list, go ahead and do a PR. Okay. And I'll, I'll, you, don't, you don't have to do a PR for anything in this list here. I'll make sure that everything in this list is in the document. So you think of other things if you want to add them. Sure. And then we can discuss it on next week's call. Doc, I think do we need to um, clarify a little bit more on each work item so that people know what it is about? That's fine too. If, if you, I was going to add the exact text I see here for the most part. If you'd like to add additional text, go ahead and add a, uh, do a PR to add more text. That's fine as well. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Anything else related to additional work stream item. All right, so I guess we may mark down here what we agreed to. So oops, can't spell. All right. So come prepared to talk. All right. With that, we only have two minutes left. Let me go back and do the roll call then. So I don't think we have time to dive anything into anything meaty. Um, Louis, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, and Ihor, are you there? Ihor? I said we're here. Oh, right. There you go. Yep. And, I'm sorry, uh, Mitch. Yep. Dan Khan, are you there? Dan? Okay, what about Alex? I see you typing. Yep, I'm here. Okay. Is there anybody else on the call that is not on the list of attendees? Do I have a star next to everybody? I think I do. do, 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 do. What is the star for? Oh, it's just an indication that, you, that you've actually been heard on the call. Um, uh, we, we keep attendance for voting rights. I, I guess I should say that. For those of you who are new to the call, because we don't have formal maintainers like a you know, traditional code GitHub project, what we do is if we ever get to the point where there's a contentious decision to be made and we just have to take a vote because we can't decide through consensus which way to go, we actually, uh, people earn voting rights by attending three out of the last four meetings. And that's why I, I had to make sure that I actually hear you on the call and, and you didn't just add your name without actually joining the call. And then I keep track of everybody's attendance here. And then everybody with a green box uh, has voting rights. And it is based upon company. And that's why I was asking for the company affiliation earlier in the call. Does that help, Alex? Uh, it doesn't help when it's an independent software project. And actually the representation is by the, by the project the community and not by a, a corporate sponsor, if you like. Yeah, we, we haven't had that problem yet until today. We have now. Yeah, yeah we, we don't now. So what we can probably have to do is just uh, let OpenFAS have a vote at the table is, what I, is the way I'd like to go with it, if that's okay. Mm. 
And but I think I think from a representative perspective, I think you'd have to be counted under VMware. So anyway. uh, that doesn't make sense because OpenFAS is not a VMware project. No, but you work for VMware. Oh, I, and, and we, we could take that offline. Let's talk yeah, about that. I mean, I was engaging with this work group for since like the whole the whole last year. Small gap recently. That's right. But as as an open as the founder of OpenFAS. So let's talk about that offline. I think um, mm, you okay. and your company may need to decide who you're representing in this work group. And that's up to you to decide, is my opinion. So, yeah. but, but we're over okay, time. Yeah, I mean, my opinion hasn't changed, but I can get, I can get back to you. I'll speak yeah, I think, I, I think your company might have an opinion. So, that's, <laughs> so I'll let you figure that one out. Okay, with that, I apologize. We're slightly over time. Um, thank you guys very much. And we'll talk again next week. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye guys. Thank you. Bye.